Hi, and welcome to this special video about the fundamentals of revenue management principles, brought to you in collaboration with the Expedia Group. We are very excited to be bringing this content to you, consisting of an article written by Vikram Singh, a podcast with Chris Banovich from Expedia and Vikram Singh, and of course, an infographic and this video. In this video, Vikram and Chris will join me to give their perspectives on understanding revenue management principles and how hotels can best adopt revenue principles into their own strategies. So let's get into it. Understanding revenue management. To understand revenue management, we must first define exactly what it is. Revenue management is an essential concept within the hospitality industry because it allows hotel owners to anticipate demand and optimize availability and pricing to achieve the best possible financial results. Within the hospitality industry, the widely accepted definition is selling the right room to the right client at the right moment for the right price through the right distribution channel with the best cost efficiency. It involves using performance data and analytics, which help hotel owners more accurately predict demand and other consumer behaviors. This in turn allows them to make more realistic decisions regarding pricing and distribution in order to maximize revenue and of course, therefore profit. An effective revenue management strategy requires a business to forecast demand and consumer spending habits to make informed adjustments. Hotels should look to past data, existing bookings, seasonal differences, weather forecasts, and other industry data in order to craft their revenue management strategy. Let's go now to Chris and Vikram and hear a breakdown of why revenue management is so important and forecasting tips, as well as using data and other essential elements that all come together to make up revenue management principles. Chris, why is revenue management important? Can you please explain why it is such an important component and why in today's market, there's no reason that hotels should not really be applying sophisticated revenue management principles to their operations? Well, adopting revenue performance principles and managing revenue decisions is truly something that's transformative for a business. It's a proven approach that drives successful commercial outcomes for hotels and vacation rentals. And the goal is to maximize revenues and profits, which means that it's something that should excite everyone because who doesn't want to make more money for their business, right? At the core, an approach focused on maximizing revenue performance involves using data and insights about your property, the competition, and the overall market to inform how you set your prices, how you manage your inventory and put forth marketing initiatives to target the right travelers at the right time with the right offer. And by looking at the right data and insights, you can predict where the market is headed so you can capture a piece of that demand. Adopting these practices and, and taking a revenue performance focused approach can also help you with operational planning and alignment, such as optimizing staffing levels based on how much demand you're forecasting. It's clear that revenue management really touches on all facets of the business. And what's particularly exciting is that today, hotels have access to real-time market intelligence and predictive insights that previously weren't available, making it easier to uncover opportunities and take action. And on top of that, it's important to note that any hotel operator can embrace revenue performance principles. Anyone can take the actions and build the habits to make more money for their business. With the right foundations in place, maximizing revenues and profits doesn't need to be complex. And with recent studies signaling that people are ready to invest more in travel compared to pre-COVID-19, it's clear that travelers want to see the world again. So really, what better time than now to start adopting revenue performance? Vikram, let's talk a little bit about understanding forecasting. Could you please explain why forecasting is an important concept to get to grips with, when, especially when it comes to answering the question, what is revenue management? Forecasting is a crucial element of getting yourself into revenue management, starting out, and with forecasts, uh, the, the most 
the simplest way to explain it is that you set a goal for yourself and you see how close or how ahead or behind you are going to be with that goal. So you don't have to go too far out. Uh, a lot of the smaller properties get uh, bogged down when they have a whole year to do it ahead of them. I would go with a, a very realistic 30, 60, 90 day forecast. And again, the goal of forecasting is not to be 100% accurate. That would be great, but you're really trying, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to set a goal for yourself and then looking at how you perform. And then, you know, once you get comfortable with uh, basics of forecasting, you take it to the next step and you start segmenting it and you start taking it to the next level. So uh, one of the most crucial things that forecasting will bring into your business is not just what demand is coming in, but you'll also be able to better price out uh, uh, your inventory. You'll also be able to schedule your uh, staff better based on what is coming and what you predicted was supposed to be coming in. So again, uh, uh, trying to do a whole year's worth of work is what can sometimes discourage a lot of the independent uh, hotel owners from doing it. So I would just really focus on 30, 60, 90 days and put some numbers down and start from there. That's a good starting point for forecasting. Forecasting tips. Let's talk a little bit now about forecasting tips. Could you perhaps highlight some of the best tips that hotels should keep in mind? Forecasting is getting more complicated even for lifetime seasoned professionals. So you should uh, be aware that uh, forecasting is going to be very fluid. Uh, if anything, we've learned from uh, the pandemic, from uh, geopolitical issues, uh, inflation, other things that are on the horizon. Just remember that uh, one of the most important tips for forecasting is uh, to be fluid. So be prepared to reforecast when things change. You don't want to set a target that is either A, easily achievable, or something that you know you're not gonna be able to achieve. So I think uh, a more realistic approach uh, is the best tip out there. And if you limit it accurately to 30, 60, 90 days, uh, you will be able to keep uh, more, of, more or less of a handle on it. Uh, it's, it's getting really hard to predict how the whole year is gonna play out. So I would, my biggest tip is, uh, to be fluid and not, you know, put some numbers down and then that's it. You you have to revisit and update uh, your forecast based on market trends, based on what you're seeing in the market, what you're hearing from vendors. And uh, I think that is a very crucial part where uh, this is not uh, a bullseye that you set and then that's what you have to hit. You have to keep adjusting the target here because there's too many moving parts uh, right now in the travel business for you to keep track of. So as you hear, or as you get feedback from different sources, you go ahead then and you make the adjustments on your side. Chris, when it comes to keeping accurate records, I think we all agree it's, it's very, very important, but could you perhaps elaborate about the importance of using the available information and why keeping accurate records is so essential, particularly tracking occupancy rates, revenue, room rates, and other KPIs. Successful revenue performance involves using a key set of metrics that help you gauge your past performance, anticipate and predict forward, establish goals and set expectations, adjust your strategy, and tell your performance story to your stakeholders. Ultimately, keeping accurate records and measuring how successful your initiatives are is a critical practice. So let's break down why that is. First, it's important to gauge how you performed in the past, as well as how the competition and the market also performed in the past. This is where it can help to look back at your own occupancy, your own average rate, as well as your revenue per available room, those types of metrics. There are also resources that can help you compare how you performed on those key metrics to your competition and to the market, which will tell you if you're getting your fair share. For instance, have you been getting enough bookings? Are you leaving money on the table by taking too much low-rated business? Are your competitors doing a better job capturing the most valuable travelers? You can also track your forecasts and your predictions. It's a great practice to measure the accuracy of your forecasts and to do so across different periods. For example, monitor how accurate your forecast is for the next 30-day period as well as the next 90-day period. 
And by measuring your accuracy, you'll be able to identify what are the correct ingredients to have a reliable forecast over the long term. Forecasting is something that should improve over time as you make a habit of looking back to compare what you thought was going to happen versus what actually happened and why. It's also highly important to track how you're currently performing to your goals. So for instance, how does your occupancy this month or this quarter compare to what you had initially budgeted? If you're ahead or behind of that, what is the impact and what actions can you, you take to improve your performance trajectory? These are all important things that help drive your strategy and keep your stakeholders of your business informed and aligned with you. Tracking and measuring the performance of your business helps you look at the outcomes and measure your outcomes in so many ways. The key is really to set goals and expectations, monitor your progress against them, and then take time to reflect back and identify what could you have changed to better help your business move forward. Chris, making use of historical data is also very important. Could you perhaps talk a little bit about how this information can be used to make reasonable predictions and what will happen to future demand. Most forecasts rely heavily on past data and assume that historical trends are just going to repeat themselves, especially with hotel revenue management. But this might not always be the case. Traditionally, revenue management involves a reliance on historical data to predict future demand. And over the last couple of years, traveler behavior has changed, which has reshaped how revenue managers use data and insights to make predictions about where future demand is headed. Over the last couple of years, we've learned that while historical trends can give us clues about future demand, it's only one piece of the puzzle. And ultimately, to drive successful revenue performance outcomes today, revenue leaders have shifted towards incorporating more forward-looking data indicators and insights to predict future demand and to inform their strategies. Bringing together historical data with real-time intelligence and forward-looking insights is helping today's revenue leaders make well-informed decisions that maximize their revenues and their profits. And there's some keys to success here. Historical data is a very helpful resource to get context on what's happened in the past, why it has happened, and what could have been done differently to be more effective with those past strategies that you had. Real-time intelligence and show you what's happening in the now and in the immediate future. And then forward-looking insights can help you see even further into the future. So altogether, historical data, real-time intelligence, and forward-looking insights can help you be most successful. Vikram, utilizing various data sources is very important. Could you perhaps talk about the available data sources that hotels have at their fingertips that they can use? Larger hotels have always had access to vast amounts of data. Uh, they buy a lot of data reports. There's a lot of information out there that's available uh, to, uh, to a big, large branded hotel or even a larger independent asset can buy a lot of data reports. As a smaller, more independent hotel, you do have access to a lot of information. So you really don't need to be subscribing to a lot of data, but there are a lot of very simple places where you can find information uh, that will help you in forecasting and staffing and all the other decisions. Uh, a, a really basic, you know, one of the most basic places to start for you is, is number one, your, your own web analytics, your own Google Analytics will give you a lot of information on uh, uh, traffic trends and, and everything else that's been happening with your conversions, how they're changing with your rates. That information lies right there. Uh, you can also get, uh, you could just go to Google Trends and for the broader market, see if interest in your destination is on its way up, is on its way down, or is rebuilding. So that's a free tool for you to use where you, know, you don't need an, a, a big subscription to get that information. Uh, two other tips that I'd really like to share uh, for smaller hotels are, you know, number one, talk to your vendors. Uh, talk to the OTAs, talk to your partners that you work with, ask them how the market is doing. They're usually working with a lot of people, so they will be able to answer that for you. Even vendors, for example, uh, for, for one of the properties that, uh, that I work with in Miami, uh, the dry cleaner in the city was the first one to tell 
the hotels that, hey, get ready, something's changing, my, my, my business is blowing up. And that's what happened over the summer. It just completely blew up. So the data sources are many. Uh, again, you're not striving for 100% accuracy, but you are, uh, one of the things you need to build in to your tool set is a set of free tools and then also talking to people. That thing still absolutely works with uh, for forecasting. Vikram, taking events and holidays into account is also something that's very, very important. Could you perhaps elaborate on why this is such a key element that hotels should consider? Seasonality is crucial part of, uh, of the hotel business. And again, with recent events uh, like the pandemic and all the geopolitical unrest that you're seeing, events have either completely transformed themselves uh, into uh, uh, into uh, hybrid events, uh, or you see events and holidays that uh, uh, festivals or, or other music events that used to happen a certain time of year are now happening at a whole different time of year. Uh, information is power, so I would absolutely keep an eye on what's happening in your location. Uh, you should Google all the information that you can uh, on uh, certain events that you were certain are happening in the fall, for example, are now happening during the summer. Uh, seasonality has really gone for a little bit of a tailspin here. We're seeing uh, even the, the traditional lean periods and markets are now extremely busy, and that's because of a lot of the pent-up demand that comes to play. So uh, events are very crucial, uh, and for, for a smaller property, uh, one of the things that I've noticed is when all of the larger hotels in the market where there's an event or where there's something happening, they would really go out and optimize themselves and optimize their rates for those events. I've traditionally seen smaller hotels not participate in that because they feel they don't have you know enough number of rooms to be worried about something like that. I think they should absolutely participate no matter how many units you have or how many rooms you have. You should absolutely be a part of this and uh, holidays and events have a direct impact on your bottom line. So you could use this as an opportunity to really build up your rate. So I would, you know, not leave this uh, a seasonality events and uh, happenings in your town just for the big guys. This is very much part, this should be very much part of your ongoing revenue strategy. And also, again, everything ties into staffing and costs as well. So you do know that when there's a big event in town, you will need the extra staff. So that way of forecasting really, you know, ties in both ends of the equation, not just making more money, but also making sure you have enough people to run the show when things get busy. Chris, keeping an eye on industry trends is also important. Could you please explain why this is such an important piece for hotels to pay attention, especially when it comes to the broader market trends? So for example, has there been a decline in overall travel to a hotel's location? Are there world events that would impact on future bookings? What's clear is the industry has seen a shift in traveler behavior. People are planning purpose-driven trips. They value vacation time more. And they're increasing their investment in making unique experiences. Travelers are now ranking flexible travel at the top of their priorities. And they're focusing intently on traveling for good. In quarter three of 2021, 70% of global searches across the Expedia Group platform fell within the zero to 30 day search window. And this was a 15% increase quarter over quarter. This indicated that travelers were planning and booking their trip in the near future, closer to the arrival date. And then in Q4 of 2021, traveler search windows lengthened. During this time, the 31 day plus booking window increased by 15% taking share away from that shorter booking window. This is just one example to illustrate that traveler behaviors are changing, and it's a good bet that they're going to continue to change. So to drive successful revenue performance, revenue leaders today should be aware of global trends, such as those that I've just mentioned, as well as micro trends in their respective markets, within their respective competitive sets, and at their properties as well. At market level, one great way to start is by looking at traveler search demand to understand which upcoming dates are in high demand. And once you have this information, you can then compare this to your own occupancy performance on those dates. You can look to see, are you also seeing an uptick in bookings on those dates? Are you noticing that travelers are willing to pay more on those dates? Do some research to understand why demand is spiking on some dates and why it's not. 
upon others. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, many markets have experienced a change in which days of week travelers stay. For instance, there might be less demand for midweek stays now than in the past. And something you can do here in today's ever-changing landscape is set a baseline of your occupancy performance across each day of week based on recent month actuals. Then compare that baseline to how the market performed on those dates. Once you have that, look ahead at future dates to see if the search demand and your own occupancy level are keeping up with those trends. And if they're not aligning and following those trends, that might be an indication to you that there's some opportunity for you to take action. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, make sure that you check out the podcast. We do do a deeper dive into these topics. Read Vikram's article. I think you'll find it very informative. And make sure you check out that infographic for that helicopter view from Looking from Above. And make sure that you keep an eye out for the following pieces that we're creating around this particular topic that we'll release throughout the year. Next one's due in July and the third piece in October. We're really excited about this collaboration with Expedia and we hope that you find this very helpful and beneficial as well. So until next time, it's bye for now.